Welcome to COIS ADMN 1620, Introduction to Information Systems. This is Chapter 11, Customer Relationship Management and Supply Chain Management. Learning Objectives. Identify the primary functions of both Customer Relationship Management, CRM, and Collaborative CRM strategies. Describe how businesses might use applications of each of the two major components of operational CRM systems. Explain the advantages and disadvantages of mobile CRM systems, on-demand CRM systems, open source CRM systems, social CRM systems, and real-time CRM systems. Describe the three components and the three flows of a supply chain. Identify popular strategies to solving different challenges of supply chains. And explain the utility of each of the three major technologies that supports supply chain management. Chapter Outline 1. Defining Customer Relationship Management 2. Operational Customer Relationship Management Systems 3. Other Types of Customer Relationship Management Systems 4. Supply Chains 5. Supply Chain Management and 6. Information Technology Support for Supply Chain Management Opening Case Tesco enhances its customer relationship management efforts. What we'd like you to think about here is, what are the features and characteristics of a good checkout experience at a shopping website? And how does software like Splunk help organizations deal with unreported customer problems, such as abandoned shopping carts? Defining customer relationship management, customer relationship management CRM, customer touch points, and data consolidation. Customer Relationship Management, CRM. CRM, treat customers differently because their needs differ and their value to the company may also differ. The factors to consider are customer intimacy, lifetime value, customer churn, CRM strategy versus CRM systems, and low-end CRM systems versus high-end CRM systems. CRM returns to personal marketing. Instead of marketing to a mass of people or companies, businesses under this approach market to each customer individually. Employing this approach, businesses can use information about each customer, for example, previous purchases, needs, or wants, to create highly individualized offers that customers are more likely to accept. This approach is designed to achieve customer intimacy. Lifetime value of a customer is the customer's potential revenue stream over a number of years. Customer churn is the inevitable loss of a certain percentage of customers. The optimal result of the organization's CRM efforts is to maximize the number of high value repeat customers while minimizing customer churn. We have been looking at an organization's CRM strategy, but what we want to distinguish is the difference between the CRM strategy and the CRM system. The systems are information systems designed to support the CRM strategy for the organization. In order to pursue excellent relationships with their customers, they need to employ CRM systems that provide the infrastructure needed to support those relationships. Customer service and support are essential to a successful business, so organizations must place a great deal of emphasis on both their CRM strategy and their CRM systems. CRM systems lie in a continuum from low-end CRM systems designed for enterprises with many small customers to high-end CRM systems, which are enterprises with a few large customers. Figure 11.1, .1, the customer relationship management process. This depicts the CRM process. It begins with marketing efforts, through which the organization solicits prospects from a target population of potential customers. A certain number of these prospects will make a purchase and thus become customers. A certain number of these customers will become repeat customers. The organization then segments its repeat customers into low and high value repeat customers. An organization's overall goal is to maximize the lifetime value of a customer. Figure 11.2, Customer Touch Points. Effective marketing today makes use of all of the channels or touch points in sync with one another. We call this omni-channel marketing. 
Omnichannel marketing is an approach to customers that creates a seamless experience regardless of the channel or device used to touch the business. Many businesses are now creating omnichannel strategies to drive this cohesive experience to their customers. To accomplish this goal, businesses must utilize information systems, specifically CRM, because the need for data consistency across channels is more apparent now than ever. It's about business 11.1. Indochino moves from an online business to omni-channeling. What we'd like you to think about here is, would you consider purchasing custom clothing for a better fit? How would you use the internet to find a suitable store? And what types of contact would you prefer from a clothing store? Why? Compare these to figure 11.2. Data consolidation. Data consolidation using a data warehouse enables a 360 degree view of a customer, collaborative CRM, and customer identity management. We saw in chapter five, modern interconnected systems built around a data warehouse now make all customer related data available to every unit of the business. This complete set of data on each customer is called a 360 degree view of that customer. A company can enhance its relationship with its customers and make more productive and profitable business decisions by accessing this view. When we have data consolidation and a 360 degree view of the customer, as an organization, we can readily share information about customers. That information sharing leads to collaborative CRM, which in turn provides effective and efficient interactive communication with the customer throughout the entire organization we integrate communication between the organization and the customers in all aspects of marketing, sales, and customer support. Collaborative CRM systems also enable customers to provide direct feedback to the business. Customer identity management is used by large businesses with several divisions and brands who need to understand who their customers are across their entire business and how the relationship has changed over time. In the same way that databases and data warehouses centralize data within a division, meaning all functional areas share data, a customer identity management platform within a CRM will help a company create a 360 degree view across an entire organization and not just within the division. Operational customer relationship management systems. These support front office processes such as customer facing applications and customer touching applications. They provide the following benefits. Efficient and personalized marketing, sales and service, a 360 degree view of each customer and the ability of sales and service employees to access a complete history of customer interaction with the organization regardless of the touch point. Customer facing applications. These are customer service and support, CIC and call centers, Salesforce automation, SFA, marketing, and campaign management. Salesforce automation has contact management systems, sales lead tracking system, sales forecasting system, product knowledge system, and configurators. Configurators are from more developed Salesforce automation systems which have online product building features that enable customers to model the product to meet their specific needs. Marketing. Data mining is used to develop customer purchasing profiles that could lead to cross-selling, upselling, and bundling. Cross-selling is the marketing of additional related products to customers based on a previous purchase. Would you like fries with that hamburger? Upselling is a strategy in which a salesperson provides the customers with an opportunity to purchase related products or a series of greater value in place of or along with the customer's initial product or service selection. Would you like to biggie size that? Finally, bundling is a form of cross-selling in which the business sells a group of products or services together at a lower price than their combined individual prices. Would you like a happy meal? Customer touching application also known as eCRM. These have search and comparison capabilities, technical and other information and services, customized products and services, personalized web pages, frequently asked questions, email and automated response, 
and loyalty programs. Loyalty programs recognize customers who repeatedly use a customer's products or services. They're appropriate under two conditions, a high frequency of repeat purchases and limited product customization for each customer. Analytical CRM systems. Analytical CRM systems analyze customer data for a variety of purposes, including designing and executing targeted marketing campaigns, increasing customer acquisition, cross-selling and upselling, providing input into decisions related to products and services, for example, pricing and product development, and providing financial forecasting and customer profitability analysis. Figure 11.3, the relationship between operational CRM and analytical CRM. On the left side of the diagram, we see the operational CRM with our customer facing applications and our customer touching applications. Feeding into the analytical CRM with our customer data warehouse, allowing us to perform data mining, decision support, business intelligence, and OLAP analysis. It's about business 11.2, Sun Life Financial. What we'd like you to think about here is, how would data integration with the functional areas of HR be beneficial to Sun Life Financial? And what information systems architecture would be required to implement systems like those at Sun Life Financial? Other types of customer relationship management systems. On-demand CRM systems, that is utility computing or software as a service, mobile CRM systems, open source CRM systems, social CRM systems, and real-time CRM. CRM systems can be implemented either on-premise or on-demand. So traditionally, we would have a server room and host our CRM system, whereas there is now the cloud option, which is software as a service, also called on-demand. Mobile CRM systems mean interacting directly with consumers through portable devices such as smartphones. Open source CRM systems, as explained in Technology Guide 2, are using open source software, which is available at no cost. Open source CRM systems have certain risks. The most serious risk involves quality control. Social CRM is the use of social media technology and services to enable organizations to engage their customers in a collaborative conversation in order to provide mutually beneficial value in a trusted and transparent manner. Social CRM is the company's response to the customer's ownership of this two-way conversation. With Social CRM, the organization would monitor services such as Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, amongst many, many others, for relevant mentions of their products, services, and brand, and they would respond accordingly. Real-time CRM systems help organizations to respond to any customer product search, request, complaints, comment, ratings, reviews, and recommendations in a near real-time 24-7, 365 manner. It's about business 11.3, Black Diamond. What we'd like you to think about here is, do you pay attention to the recommender systems at the websites where you shop? And how are recommender systems related to customer profiles and potential increased sales to customers? Supply chains. We're going to talk about supply chain, supply chain visibility, including inventory velocity, and the structure and components of supply chains. A supply chain is the flow of materials, information, money, and services from raw material suppliers through factories and warehouses to the end customer. It also includes the organizations and processes that create and deliver products, information, and services to the end customer. Supply chains enhance trust and collaboration among supply chain partners which improves supply chain visibility and inventory velocity. Supply chain visibility refers to the ability of all organizations within a supply chain to access or view relevant data on purchase materials as these materials move through their suppliers, production processes and transportation networks to their receiving docks. 
the more quickly that a company can deliver products and services after receiving the materials required to make them, the higher the inventory velocity is and the happier the customers of that company will be. Generic supply chain. We have from left to right tier three suppliers, which supply the tier two suppliers, which supply tier one suppliers, which go to the manufacturer. You would see levels like this if you were talking about General Motors or a large firm of that nature. The manufacturer puts their product to the distributor or wholesaler, which distributes to a retailer from which the customer purchases. Upstream moves from the right to the left with the flow of orders, information, payments, and returns. Downstream moves from left to right with products, services, and information flowing downstream. The structure and components of supply chains. We're going to talk about the structure of supply chains and the components of supply chains. The structure of supply chains, upstream, internal, downstream, reverse flows or reverse logistics. Upstream is where sourcing or procurement from external suppliers occurs. In upstream, supply chain managers select suppliers to deliver goods and services that the company needs to produce its product or service. Also, supply chain managers develop the pricing, delivery, and payment processes between a company and its suppliers. Internal is where packaging, assembly, and manufacturing takes place. Downstream is where distribution takes place, often by external distributors. Supply chain managers coordinate the receipt of orders from customers, develop a network of warehouses, select carriers to deliver products to customers, and implement invoicing systems to receive payments from customers. Reverse flows or reverse logistics. The flow of information and goods can be in both directions, bi-directional. For example, if we had damaged or unwanted products, they can be returned and that process is known as reverse flows or reverse logistics. The components of supply chains. Tiers of suppliers. Tier three, basic products. Tier two, sub-assemblies. Tier one, integrated components. The flows in the supply chain. We have materials flows, information flows, and financial flows. As we talked about in the diagram, our tier three supplies are tier two, which supplies our tier one and the tier one is directly in supply to the manufacturer itself. Material flows are the physical products, raw materials, supplies, etc., that flow along the chain. Information flows are the data that are related to the demand, shipments, orders, returns, and schedules, and any changes to that data. And financial flows involve the money transfers, which are payments, credit card information, authorization, payment schedules, e-payments, and credit-related data. Supply chain management. We're going to talk about the five basic components of SCM, the push model versus the pull model, problems along the supply chain, and solutions to supply chain problems. Five basic components of supply chain management. Plan, source, make, deliver, and return. Planning is the strategic component where an organization develops a strategy for managing all the resources that are involved in meeting customer demand for their product or service. Included in that is developing a set of metrics to measure deliverables, to monitor the organization's supply chain to ensure that it's efficient and delivers high quality and value to customers at the lowest cost. Source is where organizations choose suppliers to deliver goods and services that they need to create their product or service. Make is the manufacturing component where supply chain managers schedule the activities necessary for production, testing, packaging, and preparation for delivery. Delivery is often referred to as logistics. Organizations coordinate the receipt of customer orders, develop a network of warehouses, select carriers to transport their product to their customers, and create an invoicing system to receive payments. And return is where the supply chain managers have to create a responsive and flexible network for receiving defective returned or excess products back from their customers 
as well as for supporting customers who have problems with delivered products. Interorganizational Information Systems, IOS. These enable partners to perform the following. Reduce the costs of routine business transactions. Improve the quality of the information flow by reducing or eliminating errors. Compress the cycle time involved in fulfilling business transactions. Eliminate paper processing and its associated inefficiencies and costs. And make the transfer and processing of information easier for users. The push model versus the pull model. The push model is make to stock. The pull model is make to order. When we use the push model, making to stock, the production process begins with a forecast, which is an educated guess as to what customer demand is going to be. The company then produces the number of products in that forecast using mass production typically, and then sells or pushes those products to consumers. The pull model, known as make to order, is where production starts with a customer order. Companies only make what customers want, which is more closely aligned with mass customization as we discussed in chapter two. It's about business 1.4, Zara. What we want you to think about here is, do you buy clothing online or in person? What are your return rates? And how does the push or pull model relate to your buying behavior? Do you purchase classic or fast fashion items? Problems along the supply chain. There are two main sources of problems. Uncertainties, for example, the demand forecast or delivery times, and the need to coordinate multiple activities, internal units, and business partners. We're also going to discuss the bullwhip effect. Figure 11.5, the bullwhip effect. One major challenge that managers face in setting accurate inventory levels throughout the supply chain is known as the bullwhip effect. It refers to the erratic shifts in orders up and down the supply chain. The variables that affect customer demand can become magnified as they are viewed through the eyes of managers at each link in the supply chain. If each distinct entity that makes ordering and inventory decisions places its interests above those of the chain, then stockpiling can occur at as many as seven or eight locations along the chain. Research has shown that in some cases such hoarding has led to as much as a 100 day supply of inventory that is waiting just in case, versus the 10 to 20 day supply manufacturers normally keep on hand. It's about business 11.5. Flex, the Airbnb of warehousing. What we'd like you to think about here is, how many different organizations do you buy from to have products shipped to your home? And how does the Flex infrastructure facilitate cultural responsiveness to emergency situations such as the COVID-19 pandemic? Solutions to supply chain problems. Vertical integration, using inventories to solve supply chain problems, such as building inventories or just-in-time inventory system, and information sharing, such as vendor-managed inventory. Vertical integration is a business strategy in which a company purchases its upstream suppliers to ensure that its essential supplies are available as soon as the company needs them. The most common solution to supply chain problems is building inventories. This allows an insurance against supply chain uncertainties. But as we know, holding either too much or too little inventory can be very costly. Therefore, companies make major attempts to optimize and control inventories. One widely used strategy to minimize inventories is called Just-in-Time or JIT. JIT systems deliver the precise number of parts called work in process inventory to be assembled into a finished product at precisely the right time. It does offer many benefits, but it has drawbacks. The suppliers are expected to respond instantaneously to requests. As a result, they have to carry more inventory than they otherwise would. From this perspective, Just-in-Time does not eliminate excess inventory. Rather, it simply shifts it from the customer 
to their supplier. This process can still reduce the overall inventory size if the supplier can spread the increased inventory over several customers. However, that's not always possible. Just-in-time also replaces a few large supply shipments with a larger number of smaller ones. So in terms of transportation, the process is less efficient. Information sharing is another common approach to solving supply chain problems and especially to improving demand forecasts. Information sharing can be facilitated by electronic data interchange and extra nets, something that we're going to talk about shortly. Information technology support for supply chain management. Electronic data interchange, EDI, and XML-based web services. Extranets, portals and exchanges, and there are emerging technologies such as robotics, drones, autonomous vehicles, and three-dimensional printing. EDI is a communication standard that enables business partners to exchange routine documents, such as purchase orders, electronically. EDI formats these documents according to agreed upon standards and then transmits the message over the internet using a converter called a translator. EDI provides many benefits that are not available with a manual delivery system. It minimizes data entry errors because each entry is checked by the computer. The length of the message can also be shorter and the messages are secured. EDI also reduces cycle time, increases productivity, enhances customer service, and minimize paper usage and storage. XML is replacing EDI and is discussed in Technology Guide 3. Figure 11.6, comparing purchase order, PO fulfillment without EDI. In this diagram, you can see the myriad paths of exchange of information between the order placer, purchasing, accounting, the mailroom, shipping and receiving, and then again repeated on the seller side. Figure 11.6 comparing purchase order PO fulfillment with EDI. We can see how little data interchange there has to be amongst the buyer itself and the seller itself as the main communication of information goes computer to computer and is available to sales, inventory, manufacturing, engineering, whomever may need that information. Extranets. They use virtual private network VPN technology, which we've discussed previously. There are three major types of extranets, a company and its dealers, customers, or suppliers, an industry's extranet, and joint ventures or other business partnerships. Figure 11.7, the structure of an extranet. On the left, we have my company with a private intranet and a public intranet linked by various VPNs to field employees, customers, suppliers, and other business partners. Portals and exchanges. There are two basic types of corporate portals. There's procurement portals, that is sourcing portals for a single buyer and multiple suppliers. And there are distribution portals for multiple buyers with a single supplier. It's about business 11.6 emerging technologies and supply chain management. What we'd like you to consider here is what types of jobs are being lost due to these innovations versus those that are being gained? And which of these technologies are you interested in? Try researching the types of job training requirements for developing, maintaining, or working with the technology. Closing case, Amazon's global supply chain. What we'd like you to think about here is how many different shipping methods are required to deliver your products to you from places that are continents away and the variety of organizations required to collaborate to produce and ship goods effectively and the types of IT systems they need to exchange accurate up-to-date information. That brings us to the end of this chapter's lecture. Thank you for your attention.